How's it going, everyone? It's your boy, FreeMatt C2, and as always, welcome back to another episode to my REW Swapped RX-8 build. In today's episode, we will finally be completing the oil system to my car. But first, let me unbox my bash bar for you all. I'd like to say thank you to Street Faction for hooking me up with this bash bar. They were able to build this in less than two weeks during these hard times. Installing this bash bar is pretty straightforward. Just remove the original impact bar and slap this on. This works for S1 and S2 RX-8s. I went with a bash bar to be able to easily route my intercooler and oil cooler lines. Upon installing the bash bar, I noticed that I will need to trim it down so there's clearance for the oil cooler fittings as you can see here. It's always a good feeling when things fall in place, just like this. For my oil cooling system, I'll be running 10AN lines and fittings. If you guys haven't watched my unboxing on my oil thermostat and oil filter adapter, make sure to go back a few episodes to see how I installed that. I got this AN wrench on eBay for $20, highly recommend this tool when you are tightening anything AN related. For the passenger side oil cooler, I'll be using a 90 degree and 60 degree red horse performance fittings. For the driver side oil cooler, I'll be using a 60 degree and 25 degree fittings. Also on the driver side, I do have to cut out a bit from the body for the oil cooler lines to pass through to connect to the external filter adapter. Just to recap, I went with an improved racing all-in-one thermostat and external filter adapter to simplify my oil cooling system. I deleted the center brace to have clearance for it and I gotta say it paid off. What you see that I'm installing here wasn't the fittings I went with. I actually installed 90 degree fittings. For the line to the front cover, I'm using two 45 degree fittings. And lastly, the line to the rear iron. I'm using a straight fitting. I'll explain further how I connect this line to the feed adapter later. Ignore the fitting that I'm trying to connect to the feed adapter now. Now I'm just marking the areas on the firewall so I know where to use my almighty hammer and bang the crap out of my RX-8 who did nothing wrong. He's just an innocent bystander. Dropping the motor a little gives you more room to go crazy. Make sure to use a heavy ass hammer to bang the firewall. I'm using a 4 pound hammer. Also use some foam padding like me to protect your motor from getting a boo boo. When all the banging is done, you'll be able to mount your intake manifold. Here's a sneak preview to what's coming up next. Here are the things you'll be needing to install your fittings to your oil cooler lines. First, I'm using this AM blocks I got from eBay. They were $20. 
electrical tape, zip ties, and an angle grinder. This is the technique that I found that works the best. I don't take any credit to this, but I think all the YouTubers I watch doing this and in my opinion, the angle grinder works the best. Basically, the steps are you wrap the area to cut with electrical tape so the nylon does not fray. Then you put a zip tie so you have a guide to cut the hose straight. With every cut you do, make sure you use a vacuum and blow air through the hose to get all the debris out. To install your fitting, you disassemble the fitting and install the bottom end to the hose. Make sure the hose is pushed in all the way till the lip. I'm using clean oil to slightly lube the top piece of the fitting before screwing it in. When doing this install, you do not need to modify your headlights. There's enough room for the oil cooler lines to get through on both sides. You do have to remove your headlights so you have enough space to make your hoses. This was actually my first time making an AN hose and I gotta say it was pretty easy. Don't get discouraged if you're doing this yourself. Hit me up if you need help with this. Now it's time to remove my oil cooler so I can cut out the area where I marked so the oil cooler lines can pass through. If you are new to my channel, you can watch my last episode to see how I made these oil cooler brackets. The plan here is to cut the sheet metal and bend it to form a lip so that the oil cooler lines won't get cut up. Now let's reinstall my oil cooler so that we can finally get this rolling again.
I found these awesome AN hose clamps on eBay. They were $20 for a pack of 10. I highly recommend these to keep the install clean. I noticed that the rear oil cooler bracket is making the oil cooler line bend. So let's remove that and cut it a little. Ah, that's much better. Now let's step back and look at our progress. I'm already falling in love with how this is coming out. Hashtag professional. Hashtag backyard mechanic. We are officially on the last hose on the oil cooler side. For the front cover, I bought this Racing Beat oil hose adapter fitting. When you order this, make sure to get the 18mm to 10am fitting as the 16mm is wrong. Luckily I was able to find this Dash 8AM banjo fitting from Radium. This will save everyone the headache of banging the right side of the firewall like I did. I'm using a 8AM to 10AM expander fitting that connects to the Radium banjo fitting.
At this point, I was actually debating how I should route this hose, and eventually I came up with a sick-ass idea. My thought process to this was, if I route the oil cooler hose above the motor, then that gives me enough space for the fuel lines and also I can make a nice bracket for the oil cooler hose. As a temporary fix, I need to cut the bracket on my oil filler neck. Eventually I'll get an elite rotary one, but right now that's out of my budget. As you know me by now, I always give a detailed cinematic shot of the install. Here you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the last part to my oil cooler system. Coming up next is my coolant system. We are definitely getting close in finishing this project and I can't wait to drive this beast. It's your boyfriend Matt C2. Peace out and see you next time.